Team Cymru delivers no-cost threat monitoring to internet service providers and hosting providers who partner with us. ISPs and hosting providers around the world are critical to delivering online access and services. Your role on this planet is not just enabling social interaction and e-commerce. Collectively, you're enabling critical infrastructure and communications necessary for the health, safety, and even the survival of billions. However, many of you may lack the tools and resources to defend your networks. Nimbus Threat Monitor gives you near real-time threat detection, illuminating the compromised assets on your network and those of your clients by correlating your network flows with our world-class IP reputation data. Log in to the completely customizable Kibana interface to see your top alerts. Filter out low priorities. Drill down into specific threats, see your top talkers and what they're talking to, and monitor your alerts over time to measure response efficacy. Saving and improving lives is Team Cymru's mission, and making the internet a safer place is integral to that mission. Our intelligence powers many security vendors' offerings, and Fortune 500 companies rely on our intel. Take advantage of our peer signal threat detection today. John, good afternoon. Um, we're going to talk about AI and cybersecurity. Before we start, I think AI is a very misunderstood term. What does Huawei understand by the term artificial intelligence in a way that most people would understand? Well, I think the best way to, to describe artificial intelligence is uh, we've probably all seen films of uh, robots moving their arms around and building cars. Uh, predominantly, that's not artificial intelligence. That's a robot being programmed to say, move here, move here, move here. Artificial intelligence is where you're getting into the computers using uh, vast amounts of historical data to begin to draw conclusions themselves. In, in two weeks from now, many thousands of people will converge in Shanghai at Huawei Connect, the annual uh, event. Um, Cybersecurity is one of the key themes and one of the key programs within that agenda. Um, what's, what's the message for the world and, and what do you hope to gain from that? So we believe that, and I believe, that technology and security is a team sport. Uh, Huawei has a very important role to play. You know, we have to design and build and deploy products that have been built with security and privacy in mind. And we are very happy for our customers and regulators to hold us to account for that. We fear no investigation, we fear no certification, we, we fear no review. It doesn't mean we're perfect, but it does mean that we're probably the most open and transparent company in the world. So, point number one, look what Huawei is doing, hold us to account, and if you think we can improve, tell us how we can improve and we will look to adopt your, your idea. Secondly, because I've said it's a team sport, you, you know, our customers and policymakers and governments, you need to look in the mirror yourself and say, what is our role? John, thank you very much. You're more than welcome. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. And a very good afternoon to everybody who is now viewing live on our webinar uh, under the uh, Global Aid Certification Webinar, which is uh, held in conjunction with the 12th Annual Conference of the OIC Cert uh, of 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, um, today we'll have uh, a very interesting uh, webinar entitled uh, certifying cybersecurity professionals toward the Industrial Revolution 4.0. Uh, in the studio today, we have two distinguished guests uh, from uh, Cybersecurity Malaysia and from the um, CI Intelligence, or the, and also another person 
coming all the way from Malacca through the virtual online, will be presenting to you and will be discussing uh, the importance of uh, uh, cybersecurity professionals and the need for cybersecurity to, uh, certifying them towards YR 4.0. As an opener, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, how the webinar will be held today, uh, we'll be having a um, uh, presentation from our distinguished panels, and after that, uh, something more interesting today, we have a quiz. Uh, for those of you who are interested to be part of it, there will be some interesting uh, prizes to be given out. And uh, on top of that, there will be a QR code for you to uh, uh, scan it. And uh, any of those winners will be sending you vouchers. So don't worry. We'll be, so what we have today, it will be very interesting. And, uh, and we do uh, like to um, get questions from you. For, uh, for, for this webinar and I think all our distinguished panels will be able to answer uh, and to respond back. As an opener, ladies and gentlemen, for the, to start it, um, as the digital economy takes the center stage around the world, the risk of cybersecurity threats has also become prevalent, with threats coming, becoming increasingly sophisticated and the need for cybersecurity um, experts have grown exponentially. The cybersecurity workforce gap, simply put, is the difference between the number of skilled professionals that organizations need to protect their critical assets and the actual capacity available to take on this work. So it is not an estimate of open position available to applicants. So based on the IC squared, uh, 2020 survey revealed that the gap between desired positions and those employed in cybersecurity has declined somewhat compared to previous years. Nevertheless, the internet eventually expose users to cyber risks and therefore our topic today certifying cybersecurity professionals towards industrial revolution is relevant in addressing this matter but the, the biggest question that i would like to bring upon uh, to to you as viewers why certificate matters certificates uh, are seen as critical to professional and career growth and is one of the reasons why many cybersecurity professionals earn multiple certifications throughout their careers and employers value certified cybersecurity professionals for a number of reasons. One of them is that um, having increased confidence in strategies and practices, and also to communicating and demonstrating that confidence and competence to customers. And other benefit from certification cited by employers is that by re reducing the impact of security breach, knowing that technology and best practices are up to date and enhancing the organization's reputation within this given industry. So, ladies and gentlemen, today, I would like to introduce to you, I think most of you, I think this person needs, no, needs not much introduction. But anyway, uh, on my left is the Chief Operating Officer of Cybersecurity Malaysia, T.S. Dr. Zahri Yunus. Welcome to the studio, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. By the way, he's my boss. <laughs> okay, Zahri is a central figure in establishment of the OIC Computer Emergency Response Team and a collaborative effort by some of the initiatives throughout the OIC countries. And uh, Dr. Zari holds a PhD in Information Security from UTEM, and he has been appointed as Board of Director of UTEM and a adjunct professor at the University of Tun Hussein on Malaysia. And uh, the other person on, our, on the left is uh, uh, Mr. Raj Kumar Kuniharan, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Cyber Intelligence in Amrahat. And Mr. Raj Kumar has been in the field of ICT training, education, and consulting for 22 years and now currently serving as the CEO of Cyber Intelligence in Yamrahat. He has been instrumental in formulating and providing industry-relevant cybersecurity awareness and capacity building program for both local and international organizations. And uh, he was also formerly from Cybersecurity Malaysia. And our third panel, all the way from Malacca, is Professor Dr. Rabia Ahmad. Hi, Dr. Pro Professor Dr. Rabia. Welcome to the studio. And Dr. Rabia actively involved in teaching information security in related areas at universities and general training center, UTEM, UTM, and also the German Malaysian Institute. Dr. Rabia was appointed head of examination committee professional scheme in cybersecurity known as global certification. And also throughout her career, she has published various articles in the area of information security and cyber, cyber physical system. Um, and her outstanding contribution in information cybersecurity can be seen through her involvement as invited speakers, examiners, reviewers, and uh, on various occasions related to both areas of a local and international institution. So, the webinar today, ladies and gentlemen, how we will, how we will be doing it is that we will be going one round, a set of questions, and our panelists will be 
um, responding and also delivering their presentation and um, uh, one after another and at the end of their both of the three presentation we will open up for questions from uh, the public from the the viewers and um, please do um, use the um, chat box and we will pick up the questions and I'll be asking the uh, all our uh, distinguished guests from here so okay um, to start the, the ball rolling um, I think it's only appropriate I would pose this question to Dr. Zari Sir, there is a worldwide shortage of cybersecurity professionals. How can we ensure the OIC region has enough to meet the demands of Industrial Revolution 4.0? Please respond. Sir. Okay, thank you, Kinabob, for the questions. Uh, in fact, uh, your question is a valid question. And in fact, uh, I will address your question in my presentation later on. Uh, in a nutshell, so it is basically, you know, uh, you're talking about. Um, uh, the needs, right, for you know, for everyone, for the talent, but not, and uh, I believe there is a need uh, for you know for cybersecurity professionals, you know, uh, wherever you are, whether you are in Malaysia, you know, we are whether you are in OIC, right, region or what not, you know, uh, certification. Uh, for me, uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, will give very added uh, to the individuals. Um, perhaps I will share more. Uh, during my presentation, right? Uh, basically, you know, I will share. I will. I will share about the initiative uh, currently being done in Malaysia with regards to the, you know, to increase uh, the cybersecurity professionals, you know, in in you know in, in Malaysia. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zari. Um, as we go along, um, now I would like to open up the other question also to Professor Dr. Rabia. Uh, we'll come to you, uh, Mr. Raj, later on. Um, so, Dr. Rabia, um, yes. how best, you are, you are coming from the academics, how best to nurture the local training ecosystem to produce quality training program and certification, thus reduce reliance on external certification program? Can you respond to that? Yes, ma'am. And um, <laughs> Dr. Zari Yunus, um, CEO of Cybersecurity Malaysia, and uh, Mr. Raj Kumar eh, from uh, Cyber Intelligence. And uh, thank you for inviting me, the organizer, as well as um, for IT expert. Okay, um, focusing to your questions, um, my comment actually um, certification is extremely important. Um, in order to come up with the future proof graduates, which actually I have prepared something on my slide. And at the same time, um, to produce the future proof graduates, um, the collaboration between industry and the university is extremely important and highly needed. And um, to answer your question, um, to nurture um, the cyber, uh, sorry, the professional. Um, what is actually important um, for us, um, first, we have to collaborate with um, academic and industry need to, to do effective collaborations. And because of now, currently, there's a lot of methods in um, teaching and learning. And in this case, uh, most of the uh, certification provider um, must actually, you know, uh, especially during COVID-19, online open courses and that kind of things is uh, very important and need to be, you know, uh, embedded uh, during the training. So that's uh, for my initial answer. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rabia. Um, okay, Mr. Raj, for the first question, before you embark into your more detail later on. Um, yeah. Law, engineering and accountancy practitioners, mm. they are all certified and they have their own society yes. and they do um, uh, uh, and they are very rigid with the regulation for this for for their uh, for people who belong to that association it is important that practitioners work, working in cybersecurity uh, cybersecurity field are also accountable due to the dangers presented by cyber threats mm. in your view what is your view about certifying cybersecurity practitioners do we need it 
or do we not need it? Okay, uh, looking at uh, law practitioners, accounting profes uh, practitioners, they've been around for many years, all right? They tend to have their own code of practice. But the thing is, when it comes to cybersecurity, I think it's relatively a very new industry for the last 15 to 20 years. And uh, I feel that, you know, there's no, like, uh, two, two areas which I can look at which are exactly the same. And the field is so dynamic, the new threats and attacks are coming up all the time. And uh, how do we actually come out with a code of practice and say that this cybersecurity practitioners must follow these areas? And a lot of the practitioners are not also not certified. A lot of them, they learn, you know, just like the hackers, they learn by themselves, all right, through curiosity, through their own interests over the years. And they're not interested in joining or being evaluated by a certain body, all right? And they may not be even interested even in attending any certification courses. All right, because they're always at 10 steps ahead and we're always chasing behind them, yeah. all right? Through training, we're actually giving the practitioners a certain level of knowledge that they need to do, uh, to have, to, um, to perform their job, mm -hmm. all right? Where the hackers, you know, they are performing their job in, in areas where they are looking at what you know today and they are looking at, okay, I'm gonna find a way to beat you or come out with a new kind of attack or threats and uh, this is where the challenge is. All right. Um, the rest, I will just go in my right. presentation. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Raj. Yeah. Um, Dr. Zari, back to you. Um, recently, the Malaysian government um, have um, launched the Malaysia mm -hmm. Cybersecurity Strategy. They call it MCSF 2020-24. Uh, it seems that Cybersecurity Malaysia has developed, and maybe you can share, uh, the Global Aid Certification um, as one of the effort uh, in, uh, in, in, in supporting the Pillar 4 of the MCSS. Yeah, there is uh, enhancing capacity and, cap uh, capacity and capability building, awareness and education in Malaysia, cyber security strategy. Now, um, if you would like to share um, the, 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 the global ACE certification that, you, that, that cyber security Malaysia is doing at the moment, and what is the importance of this professional situation in promoting government initiative in upskilling and reskilling. Uh, thank you again uh, for the questions, uh, Colonel Bob. Uh, regarding the uh, initiative, right, uh, talking about the upskilling and reskilling of uh, individuals uh, concerning uh, to support the initiative that can be being done by the government, especially the MCSS, the yeah. Malaysian uh, Cyber Security Strategy. Um, uh, Again, uh, just to share a few, I will be sharing later on uh, in more great details, you know, yeah. during my, you know, uh, my presentation. Uh, I suppose it is uh, part of Cyber Security Malaysia strategic uh, plan, you know, a long-term strategic plan. Uh, in fact, uh, we are collaborating uh, with universities, you know, we are collaborating with our industry partners such as uh, CI here, you know, with Raj, you yeah. know, he in fact, uh, one of our active partners in uh, Global A Certification, and Professor, Professor Rabia herself, she also very active, uh, very supportive, you know. So basically, um, I would say that, you know, the programs are actually ongoing. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, in fact, we are supporting the government uh, initiative. And this program, uh, you know, is supported, uh, talking about Global A, right, it's yeah. supported by the government, uh, as well as supported by industry. Academia, you know, uh, I suppose it's a very holistic program mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, again, if talking about paper certification, uh, I, I'm strongly believe that, you know, they will enhance the number of, you know, security professionals, you know, in Malaysia. Yeah. Perhaps, Doctor, I mean, uh, I think time is also not our side. Maybe perhaps you can uh, uh, sure. elaborate a little bit more uh, right. on, Thank the, you very much. on the slide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think you, you have been heard, uh, first of all, uh, Sminda Rahman Rahim. Um, Assalamualaikum wabarakatuh, and uh, maybe good morning, you know, good afternoon, <laughs> good, ev uh, to, good evening, you know, wherever you are. Uh, thank you again for your participation in this uh, program. Uh, since uh, the program start, right, we have heard about the Global A certification. Uh, A stands for Accredited Cybersecurity Education, uh, you know. So it's basically a uh, cyber security uh, program uh, focused in uh, people certification, right? 
uh, developed by Malaysia, you know, by using you know, our, our local expertise uh, in Malaysia. So maybe you know, it's good for us to, to start with you know, um, by looking at the, some sort of definition of what we do mean by cybersecurity professional. You know, cybersecurity professional is talking about a person, right? a person uh, with strategic capability in strategizing, uh, planning, and executing uh, cybersecurity initiatives. Uh, the person is responsible in advocating high standards of ethical conducts and up-to-date knowledge and skills that underpin professionalism and competent practices. Right? And the third one is, is quite, quite important uh, in terms of, uh, you know, as a professional, you must demonstrate you are competent. You, know, you must demonstrate that you are professionals. So that, how to demonstrate that is by having uh, what we call it CPD, continuing professional development, you know, by accumulating those points. And, and uh, this needs to be you know, continuous you know, uh, from, 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 you know, from uh, time to time you know, to, to ensure that you accumulate uh, enough points you know, so that you are able to be uh, classified or defined as a cybersecurity professional. Right. Here I have some statistics you know, uh, developed or, or prepared uh, by the US uh, regarding uh, how certifications, you know, can advance careers can benefit uh, the individuals. Um, again, I know the statistic is very US centric, but I believe you know, it can be used you know, as our reference. You see, if you look at from the, the slide here, right, uh, if you compare non certified professional and certified professionals, uh, they, mark, they are more confident you know, at work. Uh, based on the statistic here, uh, three uh, highest, you know, three more highest compact, you know, uh, in terms of confidence uh, from non-certified professional and certified professional. Now, in terms of quality of work and improved work environment, you know, again, a person that has a certification and if you compare the person that do not have certified certification, uh, you know, based on statistics here, based on the survey, <coughs> you, know, uh, you know, they are uh, more, more better here. You know, in terms of pay rise and promotions, again, right? If you, uh, you know, if you take a look from the uh, data here, non-certified professionalism and uh, certified professionalism, you know, those who have uh, certifications, uh, perhaps, you know, here there will be opportunity to get more pay raise and and promotions. Again, here, you know, if you compare from non-certified and certified, you know, those who have certification here, you know, they have a greater chance of a pay raise and, you know, larger uh, pay raise. All right. So what is Global A certification, right? Um, so basically, it is a large-scale systematic plan of actions and arrangement to establish certification for cybersecurity professionals, right? As I had earlier, in, collaborated, in collaboration with government agencies, industry partners and instead of higher learning institution. So it is very important, right? Those, those are the stakeholders, right? Um, public, private kind of uh, partnership, right? It's very important. And when it comes to the professionalism, right? It must be, you know, industry driven because the people, you know, when they certify, they will work, right? Uh, to the, uh, to the uh, supply side. And also must be vendor neutral. And in our case, in Malaysia, the certification is developed in tandem with international standards such as ISO IC 1024. You know, we are now working on that. Uh, ISO IC 27001 on security management. In fact, we are already certified, you know, uh, by the ISO IC 2001 uh, SMS. And also ISO IC 9000 on process. This also, uh, uh, you know, ongoing. So in, in our case, you know, the quality and standards you know, are very important. We are not compromised on that. And that's why we are embarking into, you know, several certifications, you know, in order, you know, so that whatever we are doing that, whatever we are doing, you know, is, is governed uh, by, by standards. So this is the goal and objective of our program here. You know, the goal is to create world-class competent workforce in cybersecurity and promote the development of 
establish a professional program within the regions. And the objective are to establish a professional certification program that is recognized globally. Right? Uh, these are very, very important. I mean, to say it's not only in Malaysia, but, but the program also can be, you know, can be adopted or can be used uh, by other you know, partners uh, in other regions. Second is to define cybersecurity professionals in the, right, in the right knowledge, skills, attitude, and experience. This is also very important. It's just like you know, your, your, you know, your program syllabus, right? That provide the, uh, you know, the, the whoever that using the, 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 the scheme, you know, to be uh, guided, you know, that acquire to, how to acquire the knowledge, right? How to acquire the, the skills. It is, uh, you know, governed by the KSA. The third is to promote the development of cybersecurity professionals program globally. And the fourth one is to ensure certified uh, personnel is independently assessed and committed to a high quality service level. Uh, Dr. Zari, yes. before, we, before we proceed, sure. uh, if I can, there is a question uh, on the okay. chat box um, from Harris Jaffrey. He was asking, uh, where can I join the certification? Okay, a uh, good question. In fact, you can browse our website, uh, Mr. Harris. Um, well, maybe you can email to me, right? Uh, at zahari at cybersecurity.my and I can guide you. Or in fact, uh, you can uh, visit Cybersecurity Malaysia website, www.cybersecurity.my Or you can go to the um, CyberGuru website or you can go to the uh, Cybersecurity Education Scheme.org uh, website. So those information are available in, in the, you know, in the websites. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Zari. Uh, thank you, Chair Haris Jafri. So please, if you have any questions in the meantime, what I'm going to do is, while Dr. Zari presenting, maybe when I find an opportunity that I can ask the question. So please, Dr. Zari, please right. continue. Uh, I want to share with you the, the framework that we are using. You know, this the, the framework that guided us, you know, in developing the, you know, the Global Aid Certification, uh, you know, framework. So here we're talking about, you know, the need uh, to have, uh, 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 you know, um, the, cyber security, the cyber security domains, sorry, you know. Uh, what, in the case, in our case, right, I have proposed zero. So we need to identify what the courses that are, you know, are required, you know. Basically, uh, here we're talking about the supply and demand side, right. So, uh, for example, you know, in industry, right, they need someone that, um, perhaps uh, good in pen testing, right? Uh, good in, uh, you know, uh, cyber defense, you know, that kind of things, right? So, uh, so we have, we, we need to identify those domains, right? Second one is independent assessment. So this is very important, right? So we need to say, you know, if talking about profession certification or training, right? Uh, you shouldn't be, the, you are the one that develop the training content. Money you are the one that uh, you know develop the question bank, and you are the one that marking the, the you know the question. That should not be the way, right? So if you're talking about professionalism, right, the assessment must be independently conducted, right? This is very important. Third one is impartiality of examination. This is very important, right? In our case, right, the, the question bank, you know, uh, the questions you know were developed, prepared by our stakeholders, you know involve uh, uh, practitioners, people like Raj, you know, uh, people like Dr. Rabia, uh, people like Kinal Mustafa, you know, who are, who are, you know, uh, not the, the, is it not the, not the persons that develop the, you know, the um, doctrine content, right? Content. Right. So, and in fact, in our case, right, we also involve these three parties, government, industry players, and also academia, all right? So, competency of trainers also very important, and the requirement of professional membership. Again, right, if you're talking about professionals, the CPD I mentioned just now, the yep. continuing professional development, you know, the, the programs, you know, you, you must subscribe uh, to this uh, uh, membership uh, program. Yep. So, talking about global A certification recognition, alhamdulillah, you know, I'm proud to say that you know uh, the program here has received uh, several you know recognitions either in Malaysia or uh, in other parts of the world. First, from the YCC itself, you know, we have received the uh, approval from the YCC uh, in 1996, yes, sorry, in the year 2016. 
Right, the first recognition that we got from the OIC. Now, we presented the concept, the paper, and then we got the approval from the OIC set. Second, in Malaysia, we got the approval from the M-Board, the, the Malaysia Board of Technologies, in the year 2017. And in fact, you know, uh, we have been appointed as the TEP, the Technical Vision Panel, uh, concerning the uh, cybersecurity sector, you know, uh, the, the domain, uh, the, the one addition domain under the M-Board. The third one, uh, from the Department of Skills, Mr. Of, Ministry of uh, Human Resource, in year 2018. So, uh, this also, you know, recognition that we already have received from the, uh, uh, from the uh, government, right? And the last one, the recent one, on 7 September 2020, you know, we received this recognition from YCIS. Uh, as you know, right, uh, YCIS is a, is a program under United Nations. Uh, it's based in Geneva, and they have the uh, this so-called uh, competition every year. Then, Alhamdulillah, I am proud to say that you know this program is uh, you know we have won uh, the the winner you know under category five, building confidence and security in the use of ICTs. Okay, what have what we have achieved so far, right? The achievements to date, uh, the KSA. Uh, the knowledge skill attitude right so this is very important uh, I would say that this is the first step we must do right to identify what are the domains that's now I mentioned just now you know what are the required uh, training that we know we need to provide so so far alhamdulillah we have developed 20 uh, you know 20 uh, so-called KSAs and um, in fact I believe you know we have addressed um, most of the you know uh, requirement you know uh, either by industry you know or either by academia you know academia so so i believe this uh, uh, sufficient but we are still working you know uh, depending on the requirement you know from our our stakeholders um dr Zari, sorry to interrupt okay, right um there's a question just mm -hmm. what is actually an ksa second well oh, <laughs> KSA stands for knowledge skill and attitude okay yeah uh, how does it um, um, how does it jive with this uh, uh, with this uh, training program? Okay, uh, simple, you know. In in order for you to, to develop your training content, right, you need some framework, right. You need some some guidance. So KSA provide you that um, set, that, that guidance. Uh, the KSA the the one that you know uh, will will. You know, if you are in university, right? It's just kind of, it's just like a, your your training syllabus. You know? I see. All so right. it, the the address, the knowledge, skill, and attitude that that need to be fulfilled. Thank you. And Lord. again, and when we developing the KSA, it's not developed by CSM alone. Yeah. No, it's de again, it's developed by the industry partners. Right. You know, it's developed by the uh, uh, the government uh, agencies. You know, it, it, uh, and in fact, the, the university as well. You know, the academia, our university partners. You know, they provide the input. You know. What should be the KSA? All right. right. Thank you. All right. right. So uh, the next slide is about uh, well, w once we have KSA, yeah. we need to develop the training content, right? Uh, so Alhamdulillah, so far we have developed uh, the running one right now five, yeah, if, as you can see from the you know from the slides. Mm -hmm. Then Inshallah, another six uh, will be commissioned, you know, uh, by end of this year. Another six, and Alhamdulillah soon, uh, and then the six will be, uh, you know, will be uh, commissioned later on. So again, this number, uh, you know, will be increasing from time to time, you know, depending on, uh, again, you know, the the, the, the supply and demand, and as mentioned earlier. Alhamdulillah, again, you know, so far this program is very hot, like cake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have received, uh, you know, talking about uh, our our supply part, you know, university, right? Uh, the students, right? Uh, uh, about seventy percent. <coughs> from the public universities have participated in this program mm -hmm. you know uh, so far very encouraging uh, i would say uh, we have received a lot of requests actually you know uh, you know how our program can be mapped you know onto the university curriculum oh. uh, and program Good. right so uh, again some data here from uh, 2018 right uh, about 380 participants have attended our program and from 380 Almost half are certified. You know, right. the, other, the, the other half, uh, they, they they need to take the exam again. Again, okay. <laughs> okay. So what you are uh, saying uh, here, 
um, the, the exams are independent yeah and it's not that easy Good. but right. and it's not but uh, and it is not that hard so yeah. it's in between so, right. so uh, as you can see the numbers there yeah. so um, but that means the quality of the program sure all right yeah sure definitely all right. All right. Uh, other than the uh, certification, right? Uh, we are also running uh, the kind of um, uh, competency training, right? Uh, so far, we have received, uh, we have, uh, you know, we have trained about uh, more than five thousand uh, cybersecurity knowledge workers. Uh, those are the breakdowns since year two thousand sixteen. As you can see from the slide, there, you know, there are not only uh, participants from Malaysia, mm -hmm. local, but there are also participants from other countries. Right. You know, country like Azerbaijan, <coughs> Pakistan, Brunei, you know, a lot, right? So, meaning to say that, um, you know, we have received uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, interest, you know, people who would like to know more about uh, this, uh, this program, right? Yeah. You know, talking about professionalism, as I mentioned earlier, right, we need membership, right, uh, membership. So, in our case, uh, membership is divided by this category, professional associate and students and for, for a professional you must uh, your working experience is more than five years and you must accumulate 40 CPD every year you know you must you know re re renew or refresh your CPD you know every year and these are the activities where you know you can accumulate your CPD in the conference like this right you you attending this conference or you know you uh, write articles you become a speaker, you know, you become the trainer, you, write, you contribute to the question bank. So th there, are, there are many ways that we are, where you can, you know, gain your, your, your CPD. Uh, doctor, I yeah. may have to remind you, maybe you can sum up everything within five minutes. So sure, sure. Uh, I, 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 I'm almost towards the end of my, my presentation. You. I, yep. uh, you know, I'm very passionate about this. So <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, please bear yeah. with me. All right, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what are the benefits? Right. Number one is world-class training and certificate at Available cost, right? Yeah. Why? Because it is developed by, by you know, locally in Malaysia, right? You know, uh, if you compare the, the, you know, if if you are familiar, right, with Sands, right, with right. IC Council, you know, with you know, like uh, IC Square, why not? No one, no, yeah, those those questions, the, I mean, those uh, programs are good, yeah, yeah. right? Of course, very expensive, right? very right. very expensive. Number one, number two is dual certification program are offered to students, right? Uh, again, I, I believe, you know, from the Data that I've shown just now, that is six shows that you know, if you have process certification, you know, will give, will give you more ad advantage, uh, you know, to the other, uh, you know, to the other participants. The third one is about mature recognition of global cybersecurity certification. That's allow other practitioners to be membership of the program. For example, here, uh, like like Raj, you know, he has many certification yep. from SANS, for example. He can join global A certification. Uh, membership, right? Yeah. No issue. You know, we recognize uh, each other. You know, uh, uh, providers. Yeah. And the fourth one, of course, about centering public-private partnership cooperation program. I would like. I mean, if I can add again, uh, as if we can take the the what the uh, the logo from uh, from A Asia. Everybody can uh, fly, so now everybody <laughs> can take. Every every can, every can <laughs> right? You're right. Yeah, 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 certainly. Right, right. Okay, this is my, my last slides. You know, this our aspiration, right? Uh, mature recognition through recognition arrangement among the, the countries. You know, for example, you know, in in, um, in Malaysia, as, as you know, right, we have here the.